Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. We've done a lot of can jamming this year. In spring, we had Can Jam SoCal. Just a few weeks ago, we held Can Jam London, the first ever Can Jam ever held outside the U.S. And coming up on October 2nd through the 4th, 2015 in Denver, Colorado, we're having our seventh annual Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, which is what this episode of HeadFi TV is about. Now, before we start, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up to let you know that this Can Jam preview video is probably going to be shorter than any Can Jam preview we've done before. This is because Joe, who works with me on these videos and who many of you know from the forums and from Head Fine Meets and Can Jams, Joe and his wife are having a baby. And that baby is due right about now. So we had to seriously tighten up our shooting and editing schedules. But Make sure you stay tuned because there are some brand new products making their first ever appearances on this episode of HeadFi TV, products I guarantee you've never seen or heard before today. So make sure to watch this shorter Can Jam preview video all the way through. One of the most significant product launches happening at CanJam at RMAF this year is the unveiling of the first new flagship headphone from Odyssey since 2011. That's the year they launched the LCD3, the headphone that's still their flagship. Well, until CanJam at RMAF anyway, because at this year's CanJam at RMAF, Odyssey is unveiling the new Odyssey LCD4. After a lot of dedicated research and development and advancements in material science, Odyssey has, with the LCD4, moved to a nanoscale thickness or a submicron diaphragm. Very, very thin. Now, while they've achieved a thinner diaphragm than they've ever used before, Odyssey still substantially increased the power of their magnet array, moving to a double fluxor magnet array rated at 1.5 Tesla, which I believe makes it the most powerful magnetic flux density in a planar magnetic headphone today. So in the LCD4 we have ultra-thin diaphragms combined with immensely powerful magnet arrays. Does the LCD4 sound fast as a result? Yes, very fast. To my ears, the LCD4's transient response is phenomenal. It is supremely delicate and explosive. Now sometimes when a company releases a new flagship model, they go in a completely new direction. And sometimes a company will take their current best in terms of signature characteristics and qualities and make that better. Now to my ears, the LCD4 takes the latter approach, and improving upon the likes of the LCD3 or the LCDX is no mean feat. And substantial improvements, they come even harder, but they've unquestionably done it with the LCD4. I mean, it's been four years since they've released a new flagship, and you can hear the years of work in this new LCD4. As for the tonal balance, it's richer than the more neutral, flatter sounding LCDX, more akin in this regard to the LCD3 and also to my ears truer to a sense of being there. I've listened to several Chesky Records albums that I was actually in the acoustic for during the recordings, and the LCD4 is extraordinarily capable of delivering much of what brings me back to a sense of actually being in the acoustic with the performers. In terms of the imaging, the tonal and timbral richness, it's at a level only a couple of other headphones have been able to do for me. The resolution and fleshiness of the LCD4's mid-range is perhaps what stands out most to me, and places its mid-band performance at or near the top of all the current production headphones I've heard to date. When you audition the Odyssey LCD4, feed it recordings with well-recorded vocals, female or male, and then let me know what you think. In addition to improved sonic performance, the LCD4 has a new suspension type headband that incorporates a wide leather comfort strap and a very nice, very trick carbon fiber band that reminds me of something that was lifted from a Formula One car. And for its weight, I find this a very comfortable headphone. The Odyssey LCD4 will be sold on a built-to-order basis for $3,995, and I'll be among the first in line to place an order, I assure you. Make absolutely sure to stop and hear the LCD4 at the Odyssey exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. As if the LCD4 wasn't enough reason to stop into their exhibit, Odyssey will also be introducing a new flagship headphone amp at CanJam at RMAF called the King. The King was designed for Odyssey by legendary amplifier designer Bascom H. King. It's a hybrid tube MOSFET headphone amp featuring a vacuum tube input section with a pair of E88CCs and a Class A MOSFET single-ended output section. You'll see in the photos that the King has meters on its front panel. Those front panel meters are precisely calibrated to reflect actual SPLs and power levels, which I think is really cool, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing how that works. I believe the price of the King will be $3,995, and it will be available later this year. I haven't had a chance yet to hear the King, but I can't wait to hear it at CanJam at RMAF. I'm sure you've figured this out by now. The launch of the new Odyssey LCD4 and the King make Odyssey easily one of the top must-see exhibits at all of RMAF this year. One of the most anticipated high-end headphones in the HeadFi world right now is the Enigma Acoustics Dharma D1000 Dynamic Electrostatic Hybrid. It's been shown in prototype forms at CES, CanJam SoCal, and Munich High End. 
If can jam at RMAF, make sure to listen to the production grade version of the Dharma, one of which I have right here. The idea behind this headphone is to combine the benefits, the impact of an excellent moving coil dynamic driver with the air, speed, shimmer, and resolution of an electrostatic high frequency driver. The result, in my opinion, is one of the strongest headphones at its price point. If you've heard the previous Dharma prototypes and enjoyed them, which many of you did, make sure to listen to the production grade version of the Enigma Acoustics Dharma D1000 as it's only improved since then. You'll be able to listen to the Dharma at CanJam at RMAF and the Moon Audio exhibit and also in Questile's CanJam exhibit. Attention exhibitors! This particular segment is actually intended for you. For years, you've seen reviews in audio magazines with measurements of audio components made with audio precision analyzers. And I'm sure many of you have wondered how your products or prototypes would compare if they were measured under similar conditions. Well, now you can find out because at RMAF Audio Precision, the recognized standard in audio testing, they're going to be hosting something very cool that they're calling PlugFest. At PlugFest at RMAF, Audio Precision will have a hotel suite dedicated to performing audio testing and measurements with three different measurement stations. At one of the three measurement stations, Audio Precision will be offering headphone testing and measurements with their APX515 analyzer, a Herzan acoustic isolation chamber, and a Gross Keymar head and torso simulator. Gross makes this 45CA measurement head we're using here at HeadFi HQ, by the way. At RMAF, you headphone manufacturers and modifiers should definitely take advantage of this opportunity to measure your headphones or headphone prototypes. In the second measurement station, Audio Precision will be doing high performance electronics testing for testing and measuring things like amplifiers and preamps. At this station, they'll be using their APX525 analyzer. Now, the ability of an AP analyzer and the APX software to precisely capture so many different measurements of your gear so quickly, it'll be revealing, perhaps surprising, and definitely eye-opening. So take this opportunity to get your amps and preamps measured by AP at RMAF. In the third measurement station, AP will be doing testing and measurements of converters and digital interfaces using their flagship APX555 analyzer like this one that we have here, which is at the center of the measurement lab we're building here at HeadFi HQ. Anyway, AP will be using an APX555 at RMAF to get the full measure of whatever DAC or other digital interface you bring in. So make sure to find out how your digital products or prototypes measure up at PlugFest. Regardless of which measurement station you use at PlugFest, I have a feeling you'll marvel at both the breadth of measurements and tests that can be done with these latest AP analyzers and the insights you'll gain about your own products and measuring them with the industry's recognized standard in audio measurements, and also how straightforward their APX user interface is, including real-time interaction and analysis and code-free automation. Now, what's also great about PlugFest at RMAF is that Audio Precision isn't going to just hook your stuff up, measure it, and send you away. In each session, you get up to 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time at a test station with an Audio Precision test expert who will run the tests and discuss and explain your results. You'll even get a printable report of your results on a USB thumb drive to take home. In this video's description and in the companion discussion thread at HeadFi, look for the link to find out more and to schedule your Audio Precision PlugFest at RMAF appointment times. There's no question that the enigmatic NWAV guy and his Objective 2 amp and Objective DAC designs called the O2 and ODAC respectively, they certainly have a big fan following. While some have DIY built these designs, they're also popular as pre-built commercial products and I don't think any company has sold more pre-built O2s and ODACs than JDS Labs. With the disappearance of NWAV guy, it seems to me that JDS Labs has taken it upon themselves to improve on the popular O2 and ODAC designs, and they've integrated their next-gen amp and DAC into one outstanding, gorgeous DAC amp combo called the Element. Now, while the Element is not in any way an official update of the O2 or ODAC designs, the principles behind them no doubt continue in the Element. For example, in the Element's amp section, the potentiometer, the volume control, is located in the signal path similarly to the O2's design. However, JDS Labs has made sure to address the O2's susceptibility to input overload, all but eliminating any concern in that regard. The Element's analog input won't overload until you reach well over 9 volts RMS at low gain. Now that's not the only improvement. In fact, the element's measured performance represents an improvement in every single measured spec I've seen so far versus the O2. Now what do I think of it? Well, it's dead quiet with my in-ears. It's powerful enough to drive anything I'd want to drive with a small form factor DAC amp like this, outputting 1.5 watts into 32 ohms. That's its peak output. It's neutral, but not cold to my ears, and it sounds outstanding at only $349. That's how much this goes for. So, it reminds me somewhat, actually sonically, of my Benchmark DAC 2 HGC, albeit a lot more affordable. Now make sure to check out the Element by JDS Labs at CanJam at RMAF, and you'll see why I'm such a fan of this piece, and why I love its impossibly smooth, huge volume control. You've got to feel this when you see it.
Okay, just a few weeks ago, we did the CanJam London 2015 preview video, and we featured a lot of companies and products that were going to be at CanJam London. Well, several of those companies have packed up to cross the Atlantic to join us again in Denver, so we're just going to do a quick overview right now of those companies covered already in the London video who will be in Denver with us too. Now, by the way, CanJam London was a blast, so I'm wearing my CanJam London badge while I quickly go over our London to RMAF globetrotting exhibitors. Sennheiser will be in Denver with some new products. I imagine they'll be showing the new closed back 400 series line that I haven't heard yet, the HD 461 and 471, as well as the new Sennheiser HD 630VB, which is their new premium closed back headphone with variable bass. I actually just took this to the Michigan meet, and uh, the HD 630VB went over very well there. Make sure to listen to it at CanJam at RMAF. Now, as in London, expect Sennheiser to have their premium products on display in Denver, like the 630VB, and up to and including their legendary flagships, the Sennheiser HD800 and the IE800. Unfortunately, Cord Electronics won't be able to join us in Denver this year as they did in London, but we're fortunate that Moon Audio will be featuring Cord's products at CanJam at RMAF. If you wanted to hear the Cord Hugo or the Hugo TT, which is the tabletop Hugo, this is the best DAC amp combo I've yet heard. Make sure to stop at Moon Audio's exhibit to listen to Cord stuff. Shit Audio will be exhibiting in Denver with us, and as they did in London, they'll be showing some new products, most notably the new Fully Balanced Shit Mjolnir 2 Fully Balanced Tube Solid State Hybrid Amp. It can also be a fully solid state amp with the use of Shit's new List Solid State Tubes that I have installed here. They'll also have the Shit Audio Gunier Multibit DAC, which is largely based on their flagship Yggdrasil DAC's multibit architecture, but the Gunier Multibit is priced much more affordably. As they did in London, AudioQuest will be showing off the production version of their new high-end over-ear headphone, the Nighthawk. I finally had a chance to hear the Nighthawk in its production form. The one I have here is an early prototype. The production ones are much prettier and sound much improved versus all the prototypes I've heard. So I'm looking forward to spending more time with the Nighthawk at CanJam at RMAF. AudioQuest will also have their Jitterbug on display. That's the new little device that they make to improve the sound of USB audio. And it has me curious enough that I'll probably tote my laptop over to their exhibit to give that a try too. So check out AudioQuest Nighthawk and Jitterbug at CanJam at RMAF. In London, Bluetooth headphone specialists Pendulumic showed off their new TAC T1 model, but as one of the CanJam organizers, I just didn't have the time to sit down and listen to it. But I've been so impressed with their Stance S1 Plus that I'll make sure to take the time to listen to the TAC T1 in Denver. Now, if you've ever been interested in Bluetooth headphones, or if you want to prove to yourself that Bluetooth headphones can actually sound excellent, and they can, make sure you stop by Pendulumic's exhibit. Hi-Fi Man's exhibit was easily one of the busiest exhibits at CanJam London, no doubt due to the fact that they were showing off one of the most affordable premium planar magnetic headphones in their new Hi-Fi Man HE400S, and also one of the finest headphones in the world regardless of price with the Hi-Fi Man HE1000. They'll be showing both of those models and much, much more like the HE560 and the HM901S portable audio player at CanJam at RMAF 2015. Not too many people have had the chance to hear the new Mr. Speaker's Ether C closed back flagship headphone. That's the open Ether. I don't have the closed one here at the moment. They debuted it at the shit show in Los Angeles last month, and then at CanJam London, they showed it again. Well, at CanJam at RMAF, the superb new Mr. Speaker's Ether C will be available to audition along with the open back Ether, so make sure to stop by to listen to Mr. Speaker's open and closed flagship planar magnetic headphones at CanJam at RMAF. RHA introduced their new S500i in London, and I have to say that it's pretty ridiculous that you can buy these things for only 50 bucks, because around these parts, that's practically spare change when it comes to headphones, and they sound a whole lot nicer than their price might suggest, so make sure to listen to the S500i at CanJam at RMAF. Make sure to also listen to their flagship. It's been around a little while, just a little while, the T20i. It has that unique dual voice coil design. Um, it's a dual voice coil dynamic driver, which is really clever, um, and it sounds very nice, so make sure to listen to the T20i and the S500i at the RHA exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. If CanJam London was any indication, I think it's safe to say that Questile has a big hit on their hands with their new QP1R portable digital audio player. For its reasonable price, it offers outstanding sound quality and drive, physical controls that remind me of my beloved iPod classics, and beautiful build and styling. If the price tags of some of the other premium portable digital audio players have your wallet trembling in fear, then stopping at Questile's exhibit at CanJam at RMAF should be a priority. By the way, they'll also have the new Enigma Acoustics Dharma D1000 available to listen to at their exhibit, which I know a lot of you want to hear, so make sure to stop at Questile at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest.
Fostex came to CanJam London to satisfy everyone's curiosity about the new Mark III versions of their T20RP, their T40RP, and their T50RP. How did they go over? Very, very well. Like I said before, the previous generation T50RP wasn't something I'd be inclined to listen to much unmodified. However, with especially the new T40RP Mark III and the T50RP Mark III, I would definitely listen to them as they are, unmodified. With an expected street price of only $159 for any of the three new models, we're talking fantastic value in planar magnetic headphones. Stop by the Fostex and American Music and Sound Exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. Now, I want to say thanks to all of these globetrotting exhibitors I just mentioned for making the trip to London and then to Denver to join us at two CanJams in quick succession. Thanks, guys. Noble Audio will be launching a new version of its very popular Kaiser 10 Universal Fit in-ear monitor at CanJam at RMAF. And while it's like no other in-ear I've ever seen before, it's also very familiar in a way I'm thankful for. The new Noble K10U maintains the outstanding K10 sound that I feel has played a large part in earning Noble a large fan base with our high-end IEM enthusiasts on HeadFi. It has that trademark sonic combination of resolution and smoothness. Now, while I'm thrilled that Noble has chosen to leave the K10U's Sonics alone, I have to say I'm just as happy to see them pushing the envelope on design and materials. Again, I can't think of anything else in the market that looks quite like this. It's at once organic and geometric. Noble seems poised with this new K10U to push the envelope on metal earphone design and precision construction. I mean, seriously, if you look at this thing, I just can't think of another earphone that looks anything like it with its milled features, logo, and texturing. And it's obviously milled. You simply can't mold things this crisp and sharp. And when you examine the fit and finish, and this is a prototype by the way, it's fantastic. I'm actually not sure how they get these two halves of the earpieces together, and I also don't know how they finish them so neatly that it looks and feels like a single block of aluminum. Anyway, make sure to check out the stunning new Noble K10U design at CanJam at RMAF, whose price remains unchanged at $1,599. Lenbrook will be exhibiting at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and if you're wondering who's Lenbrook, you probably have heard of the brands NAD and PSB, and both of those companies operate under Lenbrook, and I'm so thrilled they're going to be at CanJam at RMAF. They're going to have a couple of new products in particular that they'll be focusing on, new products. This is the NAD Viso HP30. I know a lot of you are fans of the HP50, and this is the new Super Oral, or on-ear, headphone from uh, NAD. So this incorporates Paul Barton. I'm a big fan of Paul Barton, by the way, the acoustic engineer behind PSB speakers. He's the P and the B in PSB. But anyways, if you watched our episode where we interviewed of HeadFi TV, where we interviewed Paul Barton, he talks about room feel. And that's the idea that he wants his headphones to sound like speakers in a room. And so he really voices his headphones uh, with that sound in mind. And it's gone over very, very well. There's a big following of NAD Viso HP50 users, and then also PSB has the M4U1 and the M4U2, and there are a lot of users of those headphones on HeadFi who really appreciate that room feel sound that Paul Barton's going for. Well, guess what? If you wanted something more portable, because it's really nice, it folds and it's very compact, the Viso HP30 carries on the room feel tradition of the PSB and the NAD sound. So if you're looking for a nice, compact, room feel headphone, you've got it with a Viso HP30. Sounds fantastic. On the PSB side of things, Paul Barton has a new universal fit in-ear monitor called the PSB M4U4. This is an outstanding new universal fit in-ear monitor. If you wanted the room feel sound, but you're more of an IEM person, an in-ear monitor person, Here's your answer, because it has the room feel sound. I've been listening to it for quite some time, including prototypes leading up to the final production version, and it's wonderful. So it uses, to get the room feel sound, he went with a dynamic balanced armature hybrid design, and what a great job he did integrating the drivers to sound as one and to give that room feel sound. So anyways, at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, make sure to listen to the PSB M4U4 Universal Fit In-Ear Monitors and the Super Oral or On-Ear NAD Viso HP30. The audio community has become increasingly interested in audio measurements, and there are a couple of fascinating measurement-related seminars happening at RMAF this year. Of course, in headphone audio, headphone measurements are a hot topic, and there's a blockbuster seminar about that happening on Sunday, October 4th at 10.45 a.m. in the Marriott Aspen Amphitheater at RMAF, and it's called Next Generation Headphone Measurement. 
Seriously, it's a really big deal. And you should attend this if you're an industry member or hobbyist at all interested in headphone measurements. At this seminar, for the first time, Jacob Sondergaard from Gross, and also with the help of Dan Foley from Audio Precision, Jacob will be giving the first public sneak peek of their next generation replica of the human auditory system, and with it, proposing a new set of headphone measurement benchmarks. Gross visited us here at HeadFi HQ to give us a look at some prototypes of what they've been working on. And again, this is really important stuff. We've been working with Gross, by the way, as we build our own headphone measurement lab here at HeadFi HQ. We have a Gross 45 CA, and I have a feeling we'll be working with these new standards in the not-too-distant future. Make sure to catch this Gross seminar on Sunday. Now, on the day before the Gross seminar, so on Saturday, October 3rd at 9.15 a.m. in the Marriott Aspen Amphitheater, there will be a seminar titled, What the Specs Don't Tell You and Why, with Jonathan Novick of Audio Precision. For those of you not familiar with Audio Precision, they're the industry standard in audio analyzers, which makes this seminar particularly interesting as they address how better specifications don't necessarily mean better sounding products. They'll discuss the question of whether or not having the same specs mean having the same sound, and they'll be talking about even more, I'm sure. I'm really looking forward to this Audio Precision seminar on Saturday and hope to see you there too. Now make sure to check the full seminar schedule at audiofest.net because there'll be many other interesting seminars happening over the three days of Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Biodynamic is on something of a roll. They've been doing some exciting projects with Astell and Kern, but even under their own brand, their own line, Biodynamic has recently released two very exciting new Tesla headphones. So back, I think it was around 2010, uh, let's start with the flagship here. They released the Tesla T1, sort of an answer as I saw it to the Sennheiser HD800 that had come out about a year before that. It's been a popular headphone ever since then. When I go to HeadFi meets, you can usually see at least one and sometimes several by our Tesla T1s around the meat. And I'm a big fan of it. It has a very detailed sound. But the second generation version, which just arrived, so I only just started listening to it, right away my first impressions are that this is a refined T1. So it still sounds like a Tesla T1, but the most notable thing for me is the treble is more refined. There's a little bit more smoothness to the treble, and I like that about this so far. Again, it just arrived. Now, I did talk to Biodynamic at IFA in Germany about some of the changes they made, and one of the key ones was improved dampening. I'm not going to get into how they did that in detail in this preview video, but make sure at CanJam at RMAF to spend some time listening to the Tesla T1 second generation from Biodynamic. I'm going to be spending more time with it when we finish this video, because again, it just arrived, because so far, very, very impressed. The second of the new full-size Tesla headphones from Biodynamic is the DT1770 Pro. The name might suggest it's replacing the 770 Pro, a legendary headphone. As I understand it, that's not the case at all. This is just a new model, and this is a Tesla model. Now, as some people have observed on HeadFi, because this is being talked about a lot on HeadFi already, um, some people have observed that it's almost like a mixture between the T1 and the 770 Pro, and I have to say, I can hear why they're saying that. It's almost like the T1 and the 770 Pro had a love child. And um, it's not as detailed as the T1 Tesla, um, but it is still detailed. It has more richness, sort of reminding me of the 770's characteristics, but certainly not as thick as the 770. So it's definitely a cleaner sounding headphone than the 770, but less neutral-ish than the T1 Tesla. Not quite as detailed as the T1 Tesla, but still detailed. At its price, outstanding. So good audiophile Fully closed, over-ear headphones are not a dime a dozen. This is definitely a solid choice at its price. Again, it might end up being my favorite biodynamic headphone ever at its price. So make sure to listen to the DT1770 Pro. I'm going to certainly be spending more time with it the moment we're done with this video. Um, and the T1 Tesla, second generation. Make sure to listen to both of these new Teslas at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest at the Biodynamic Exhibit. Maybe two or three years back, Ken Ball from ALO Audio told me he was developing a new family of in-ear monitors, and what he came out with was a very unique family of in-ear monitors. They were finally released under the Campfire Audio brand, and what's so cool about this family of in-ears is they're each their own unique character. It's almost like kids, right? They're not, they're not all alike. They each have unique character, unique sound. They all sound really good. But let me give you an example. So here's the Orion, right? This is the $499 most affordable model in the Campfire Audio line. It integrates a single balanced armature driver into a CNC aluminum enclosure. And again, that's $499. And it sounds very, very nice. The Lyra is the next model up. It's $749. And it uses an 8.5 millimeter beryllium PVD driver in a tuned high mass ceramic enclosure. And that also sounds excellent for $749. 
But then we move up to the Jupiter, which is the flagship at $1299, and it integrates four balanced armature drivers into a CNC aluminum enclosure with an electroless nickel finish. So you can see the three of them each have a different driver complement, uh, different finish, different body materials. They're all unique, and they all sound fantastic, and you really need to hear them. Go to the Campfire Audio and ALO Audio exhibit at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest to hear the Orion, Lyra, and Jupiter. ALO Audio is having a big year, not just for its Campfire Audio in-ears, but also for this. This has been a big hit. This is the ALO Audio Continental Dual Mono. I love this thing. It's a portable DAC amp combo. It's a great alternative to something like the Cord Hugo. It's actually quite a bit less expensive. And what I like is that Ken Ball at ALO Audio and Vinny Rossi, who I believe designed this. So Vinny Rossi and Ken designed this. And Vinny Rossi, you guys probably know him from Red Wine Audio and now Vinny Rossi Audio. They designed this. It's a tube solid state hybrid high res DAC amp combo. So you can either just use the amp section if you have your own source and you want to just drive the amp section because you like the sound, you're a tube audio enthusiast, or you can use its built in DAC. And what's just really nice about this is again, it's just a different flavor. I am a tube audio enthusiast as well, and I have a Cord Hugo and love it, but there are just times I turn to this for a different flavor. So if you're kind of looking for an alternative, if the Cord Hugo is just out of your budget, um, or you're a tube audio enthusiast, you gotta give the ALO Audio Continental Dual Mono a listen and find out why it's so popular on HeadFi. It is really, really, really good. So yeah, this is the ALO Audio Continental Dual Mono. These are the Campfire Audio in-ears. You'll be able to hear them all at the ALO Audio and Campfire Audio exhibit at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. In high-end portable audio, right now I don't think there's a more exciting company out there than Astell & Kern. They're just always pushing boundaries. Um, from industrial design to component design, um, both of which can push up price, so they're pushing boundaries there too. But just performance. Astell & Kern is always pushing boundaries, and I really like that they do that. So on the one hand, they have the affordable player, and on the other, they have the Astell & Kern AK380, which is $3,500. But they're not afraid to go there, and I like that. So. In the CanJam London preview video, we talked about the AK380 amp, we talked about the flagship player AK380, and then we touched on the AK380 amp, that it would be in London, but I didn't have one at the time. Well, I borrowed one of their prototype amps for, for, at CanJam London, and I've been using it since, and it's fantastic. So the AK380 alone has desktop quality sound, in my opinion. With the amp module, man, it just gives it a lot more drive, especially if you have headphones wired to use the balance, the two and a half millimeter balanced out um, that Astell and Kern standardized on, because the balanced out on this amp module pushes a lot of power. So if you have a chance, make sure to listen to the AK380 amp module and the AK380 at Kanjam Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Totally worth it. Something else I find exciting about Astell and Kern are the collaborations they form with other companies. So rather than, say, for example, create a headphone all on their own, they decided to work with companies that already had strong histories of making really good headphones. So they did it with Final Audio Design to start, I believe, and then they worked with JH Audio and Bayer Dynamic. With Bayer Dynamic, their first headphone was the Astell & Kern AKT5P, which was their own uniquely voiced version of the Bayer Dynamic Tesla T5P. I actually prefer the voicing of the AKT5P. I have both. So recently, very recently, at IFA in Germany, they announced a new collaboration with Bayer Dynamic and it's called the AKT8IE. This is a Tesla driver, the first Tesla driver in-ear monitor developed by Biodynamic and Astell and Kern. What a wonderful sounding piece. So the driver looks like a miniaturized version of the Tesla T1 driver. I held both drivers in my hands. Literally, it looks like a miniature T1 driver, but it does not sound like a T1. The T1 is a more detailed, a highly detailed, more neutral-ish sound signature, and this is a highly detailed, um, smoother, richer sound signature. And frankly, I really love the way it sounds. It's kind of where my tastes have sort of been shifting anyway lately, and I love the sound signature. I also love the design. Very, very comfortable, at least on me. Um, it's a concha type design, cable up design, and it pops in and out as fast as my customs and forms a good seal without going too deep. They spent a lot of effort working on these super soft ear tips. And it also comes with complies if, you're, if you'd rather use foam ear tips. So anyways, at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, Make sure you take the time to listen to the Astell and Kern and Biodynamic AKT8IE wonderful universal fit in-ear monitor. While we're on the topic of Astell and Kern and Biodynamic collaborations, I wanted to spring a surprise on you because this was a surprise to me. They only recently told me about it. It's so new there is not even a price announced yet. And I don't think it's been seen prior to, well, right now. So this is it. This is the Astell and Kern AKT1P. It is essentially Astell and Kern's version of, well, the also brand new Biodynamic Tesla T1 second gen. 
What's the difference? The T1 second gen, 600 ohm nominal impedance, hardly ideal for portable device. Um, 32 ohms for the AKT1P, very ideal for driving with portable devices. So I have it right now plugged in to the balanced output of the AK380 amp with an AK380 of course, and it sounds like a good, like a really good, like an excellent desktop system driving a T1 second gen, only I'm carrying it around with me in my hand. It's fantastic. So it just arrived, again, don't know the price, don't have the factory packaging, but I do know I like it a lot. So make sure to listen to the T1, the AKT1P at the Astell and Kern exhibit and the AKT8IE also at the Astell and Kern exhibit. You would be silly to miss either of these. Vmoda is going to be at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and if you watch HeadFi TV, you may have seen two recent episodes we did. One was about the Vmoda 3D Custom Shields. It's a new shield they do that's 3D printed. Very cool, and you can customize them. They'll have some examples of the 3D Custom Shield at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, so make sure to check out their exhibit to see them, and of course to watch the HeadFi TV episode if you want more details about it. We also did an episode about the new Vmoda Crossfade Wireless, finally a Bluetooth Vmoda, a wireless Vmoda. If you've been waiting for that, now's the time. They'll have it at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and if you want details about the new Vmoda Crossfade Wireless, make sure to check out the HeadFi TV episode we did about it. They also have a new in-ear monitor called the ZN for Zinc, and it is a very nice in-ear monitor that they'll have at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. I finally heard the production version at CanJam London, and it might be their most audiophile-friendly headphone. It's a really nice sound signature from the Vmoda ZN, so make sure to visit their exhibit and check out the new 3D Custom Shields, the Crossfade Wireless, and the Vmoda ZN. So that was just a preview of some of the goings on and some of the sweet gear you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2015. Again, that's happening October 2nd through the 4th, 2015 at the Marriott Denver Tech Center in Denver, Colorado. And of course, we're part of the big show, Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. And between Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, you can pretty much hear any piece of high-end gear you've probably ever wanted to hear before. So for more information, you can go to audiofest.net. And of course, for CanJam information, you can always go to canjam.org. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Denver.